Okay, so let me ask you a question. Which are the top three strongest emotions filmmakers and video editors feel when editing a video? Is it happiness, excitement and joy? No, wrong. It's anger, anxiety and frustration. 100%. And so, in this video, I want to share with you 10 quick tips and tricks to edit faster and more efficiently, but also, and maybe even more importantly, to alleviate your feelings of frustration. Here we go. So, you want to edit your videos in 4K, because, well, everyone does it, and 4K is the new 1080, right? But what if your computer is not fast enough, and your camera can't record proxies? and you don't really want to create proxies all the time because it takes so much time. Well, an easy way to make Resolve run faster and smoother is to, first of all, just lower the playback resolution here to half or quarter. Or, if that doesn't work, you could also try lowering the project resolution in the project settings temporarily to 1080 or even 720. So only while you edit. It just makes everything run a lot smoother and faster. I still do it sometimes. Just don't forget to switch back to 4K once you're finished and check everything because sometimes, rarely, but sometimes it happens that when you add effects or titles to a 720 or 1080 video and you switch back to 4K, it doesn't look right. Sometimes the position changes or I don't know. So always switch back to 4K and check everything before you start thinking about exporting. Okay? Okay. And another way to get instantly smooth playback when you're editing an effect-heavy video with a crazy color grade is to just bypass all the effects and color grades. And it's this icon right here, see? Or you can just use shortcut Shift D. Stack timelines is actually a super versatile feature. I've seen people use it in the most creative, time-saving ways. But this is how I use it. So sometimes I have to copy paste a lot of stuff from an older project, right? And well, you know, you could open that older project and then here you can switch between them, between the new one and the old one. But an even faster and more efficient way is if you go here and activate stacked timelines. And now you can create multiple timelines in one project and switch between them. So what I sometimes do is create a second timeline, then go to the project from which I wanna copy paste a lot of stuff copy-paste everything, paste it in that second timeline, and now I can just switch between those two timelines and copy-paste everything I need. But like I said, you can use stack timelines in so many different ways. So let me know how you're using them or how you're gonna use them now that you know that they exist. And drop it in the comments because it might help other people. Okay, this is something that I find super frustrating. So sometimes a project gets to a point where it has six, seven, eight, or even more tracks stacked on top of each other, right? And well, if for whatever reason you wanna quickly move something that's on the top track, one track up, but you can't see the track where it has to go, if you do it with your mouse, it glitches and it moves like five or 10 tracks up at once. And sometimes you also can't even drop it there and it just glitches back. Now, you could just move everything so that you have more space, but you could also use the amazing shortcut Option plus arrow up, and done. No more glitchy frustration. Command or Control Z, undo is an editor's best friend, right? You use it like hundreds of times. But sometimes you have to use it hundreds of times in like five seconds. Well, then it might be easier to open up the history window here in edit, and it will show you all the actions you've done with a description. And you can just switch back and forth between them. Super useful. Okay, so I've already showed you how to use stacked timelines to work more efficiently and faster, but you can also create a timeline template. And again, you can use them in the most creative ways. How does it work? Well, just start a new project and then in the media pool, right click and create a new timeline. And then uncheck this here so you can manually set everything, frame rate, resolution, color profile. And once you're done, hit create to create a timeline. And then, for example, for videos like this, where I have a list of tips and tricks, right? I always use the same elements. I have these title cards, I have the same title that I always use, sometimes also a message saying that it's a sponsored video, my zoom effect that I always use, and an adjustment clip with my color grade. It's always the same for all of these tips and tricks videos. So just put all the things you need on a timeline and make sure that the assets that you use 
will stay in the same location on your computer. Because every time you'll use this template, it will link back to the location where it was when you created the template. And then once you're finished, right click on that timeline in the media pool, go to timelines, export, and then export it as the first thing here. Give it a location on your computer and save it. And now whenever you start a new project, you can either drag that file in the media pool and it will open that timeline template or right click in the media pool, timelines and import and look for the file. And now you can start your project with all the elements that you need already there. And you can actually do the same with a project. So a project template, how? Well, first like with the timeline template, just start a new project and create your template. So set all the project settings to whatever you want, frame rate, resolution, color profile, then drop everything you need on the timeline. You can also create bins, add video tracks, effects to the video tracks or audio tracks, whatever. Then save that project. And now when you open the project library, open the template that you've made in read-only mode, save it right away to a new project, and done. You can start editing your new project with that template that you've made. And I find this method a bit more comfortable and easier than the timeline templates, but I don't know. One has probably advantages over the other. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Okay, and another one for all of you who have a slower computer, which can be frustrating. Trust me, I know. Because then the playback is totally messed up and slow, and usually it's because of the effects that you've used. So what you can do to make everything run smoother is to turn on render cache, so that Resolve will already render those effects. How does it work? Well, go to playback here and then render cache and set it to smart or user. If you set it to smart, Resolve will automatically try to find out what it needs to render for you to get smooth playback. And if you set it to user, then you have more control. You can decide what you want Resolve to render. If you set it to user, there are some options here in the project settings that you can go to and enable or disable. And then on the timeline, what you have to do is right click on a clip and tell Resolve what you want it to render. And then if you see a red line here, it means the effect is not rendered yet. If it's blue, it means it's rendered. And once it's blue, you should get smooth playback. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can also render nodes in the color page. For example, when you add an effect like noise reduction. If your render cache is set to smart, Resolve will do it automatically. If it's set to user, just right click on a node that has an effect and select node cache and turn it on. Again, red means not rendered, blue means rendered. Just keep in mind two things. First of all, whenever you make a change to an effect, no matter how small it is, a Resolve has to render the whole thing again. And then secondly, rendering creates files in the cache folder and it can add up really, really fast. So keep an eye on that folder and empty it regularly. Okay, so let's say you've been editing a project for days, maybe even weeks but you weren't very organized. It happens, I know. You didn't create folders in your media pool, you just started taking clips and assets from different folders on your computer, just dragging them blindly on your timeline, and then at the end, when you're finished, you decide that, oh shit, you need everything that you used. All the files, images, sounds. So now what? Well, you can go look for everything manually, but it's a pain in the ass. Or just go to the project library, Right click on the project you need all the files from and export project archive. Give it a location and make sure that media files is checked here. And now Resolve will save that project in that location, but also all the assets that you used, images, sound clips, music, all the video clips, everything that's scattered all over your computer will be brought together in that one folder. And everything is a copy, of course. Frustration, situation, avert it. Okay, and then the final, the tenth tip, make sure that live save is turned on all the time. Do not ever turn it off. There's a reason why it's called live save, because it's a lifesaver. And I think it's enabled by default, so usually it's on, but when enabled, Resolve will save every time you make an action, every time you do something. So your project will literally be saved every second. And even when Resolve crashes, you know, I've never lost more than a second of work. It's amazing. And as far as I know, it doesn't slow down your computer. Okay, and that's it for today. 10 quick tips and tricks to edit faster and more efficiently 
and more importantly, to alleviate your feelings of frustration. Let me know what your favorite one is, drop it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.